Oh dear, this is going to be another sad one. Locked. What? I should look around some more before I start breaking down doors. No, just break it down. It'll be fine. Oh yeah, I actually really like how Waluder is pronounced. I wouldn't have said it that way. Oh, we got a pet Torgal. <laughs> oh, love it. I love Torgal. Conditioning schedule. Today's exercises will consist of the press yard, 20 sandbags for, each, for such duration as instructor shall dictate, the furnace, Burn intensity gradually increased. Live combat, one to three hellhounds, depending on performance. We got hellhounds. Conditioning. Uh, the burn one. Gosh. Oh. The kingdom of Walud hereby incorporates this institution wherein juvenile bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state as soldiers. Trainees succumbing to the crystal's curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard is strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bearer disposal, disposal within its bounds is punishable by death. Disposed of. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. I need to find that registry. I've recently learned that my daughter, my own daughter was among the children, turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I had not so much as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe. But inquiries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood. Now I see her everywhere. Ugh. Why would you torture anyone? Why does it have to be your flesh and blood for you to figure it out? Today, one of the children smiled at me in the... These are children. Today, one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she inherited from her mother. The mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me. My daughters, my wives, all of them. All those children. So many have died at my hand. I can bear the guilt no longer. So I have decided tomorrow I too must die. It will be the last order I give those poor wretches. The last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb and inter my accursed corpse beneath the white tree whose crooked hands reach to the sky in supplication and beside me my shame my curse the record of record of all their names all those i have wronged gosh this reads like a suicide note did the director tear them plan? limb from limb one way to find out. Why would you make them do it to you? There are other ways. My gosh. This place is screwed the heck up. Super screwed up, yeah. Search for a forked Fort white, white tree. tree. This must be the place. 
Oh, jeez. Could he really be buried here? There's something hidden among the roots. Let's see. This must be the registry. registry of bearer losses and how they died 10 years old 9 years old 12 disciplined for attempted flight succumb to conditioning lithification emaciation oh my gosh so many names place was a slaughterhouse. How could this happen? And where is the architect of all this misery? They deserve this. They deserve what it was only happened a to them. Time, I suppose. This place is cursed. Oh. It's so dark and so messed up. Really it is. To the hideaway we go. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay. Where is he? There are loving and caring people in this world, but, like, it's just also so bad. How do I get there again? This place, for some reason, always confuses me. <laughs> did you, by any chance, recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. My goodness. How did you make it out of there? I may. The bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survive. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. Oh. I can still remember their faces. Like it was yesterday. 
children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. One of their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valistia will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity. Were it not for you. Thank you. Oh, jeez. I mean, it's sad either way, but like just thinking about how it's children. The realm will hear of Badbach. I pray that the tale of my fallen friends will spare future generations the horror we endured. Thank you for helping keep their memory alive. Oh. It's too much. It was a good quest. Okay. Oh, wait, we have... Okay, so we have... Letters, and we have side quest letters. A note of thanks, my Lord Marquis. I write to thank you for the kind consideration you have shown for those whose names are unwritten are written within the pages of the Book of Martyrs. I know that it would move them deeply to know that the first shield of the Phoenix laments their passing. Though each and every member of our order stands ready to, to sacrifice their lives in service of the Phoenix, I do not doubt that those who are taken before their time go with regret for the long years of duty left undone. That they should live on in the memory of a proud son of House Rossfield, should, such as yourself, should surely go some way to soothing their sorrows. Oh, Gav. Etta seems fond of the silver bow we gave her, so much so she's been taking to setting it atop her belly as she rests. To hear her tell it, the rascal kicks something fierce when she does, too. Sounds like we've another fighter on our hands and none too soon. I can hardly wait to teach our newest little curse breaker everything I know. Though I suppose that we can all celebrate first. No need to get ahead of ourselves now. Oh, this is so cute. Bringing together three men from differing backgrounds was not to be without some difficulty. However, come together we did. For a better Valisthea, the triunity was but a first step. A longer, more bitter journey awaits us all, one that will almost certainly end in hardship. Yet, what matters most is not the destination, but what we can learn from one another while on the road there. You have paved the road for us with your courage, Clive, though we must have the courage to walk in it. Your love loving uncle! Ah... <sighs> A new day. I am not so foolish to believe that a single shaming at the hands of the town urchins can dispel a lifetime of hatred built up in one's heart, just as a pot cannot be made clean by reminding it of its grime. It takes effort, persistence, and more often than not, a stiff brush and bucket of lye. But more than, more than that, it takes time. Fortunately, your courage and leadership has granted us just that. We must now decide whether to embrace or waste it. A wise man once said, the night is always darkest before dawn. It is a good thing then I count one who burns so bright amongst my friends. That is sweet. Joshua! Do you remember what you told me that night at Phoenix Gate? That while the fate of Rosaria sits on my shoulders, 
The fate of its dominance sits upon yours. But we are not both dominant. Are we not both dominants of fire? Does not the flame of our forebears burn in both our hearts? Should I not protect you as you have protected me? You have chosen to be my shield. Now let me choose to be yours. Is this not what our father wanted? What Sid wanted? To cast aside fate and forge our own paths. Grant me this, Clive. Let me be your strength. Oh. I'm going to skip that because uh, it's a side quest. Uh, I know that I ask much of you in this coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future. Oh, I've already read this. This is part of the quest. That is sweet. What? You didn't think I were just saying that stuff about hiding my engine, did you? Wouldn't you know, I've already a fine spot picked out and everything. But if you're gonna go on this grand adventure, you'll need to be quick about your business with that ruddy god of yours. <laughs> Take too long and somebody more clever might beat you to the prize. I suppose in that case, I could bury you at one of my lesser inventions. Goddess knows I've, I've countless. Oh my gosh, she's the best. Oh man, if we don't make it. Here, not long removed from the last, when you, when you last placed yourself between us in peril, I sit and pen yet another letter, in which I try and find the words to somehow express the gratitude of an entire town. Still, something feels different about our latest triumph, where in the past we leaned ever so heavily upon your good graces. This time we found strength elsewhere, in ourselves. Our hardship has shown us that which should not, should have been apparent all along. We are not as different as we want to believe. Does a peasant love his homeland any less than a noble? Does a bearer love his family any less than another man does his own? It is this love that has united us and given us true strength. Should every thrall, Akashic, bandit, and brigand in the realm come charging our, charging our gates, we will not fret. We will not falter. We will fight. And we will win. Isabel. Oh, okay, wait. So, there should be four, right? There's In a Mood, In Search of a Lost Home, Concern for Jill. Where's the... Hmm... Must be missing one. Reluctant as I am to add to your burdens, I would ask your aid in a personal matter, albeit one that may be beneficial to your cause. There exist ancient texts deemed so injurious to modern thought that mere possession is deemed a crime, and it was a chance encounter with one such tome from a distance that sparked within me the scholastic curiosity which burns to this very day. I wish to enlist your aid in reclaiming that text. Should you require a further incentive, know that I am willing to offer compensation for services rendered. Okay, that makes sense. That makes tells sense. Me this is no mere adventure story. I will prioritize finally. <laughs> okay, this time I will wait and read them as I do them. Darn, that's not a, a real exit. Because it seems like the, uh, oh, probably the Torgal one and the Jill one are gonna be good. So I'll, I'll leave those so I get the full story in one go. Hey, I got your letter. Vivian. I read your note. Be happy to help you find the book you're looking for. Thank you, Clive. But tracking it down will not be easy. Are you sure? Please. You have always granted me your wisdom and insight whenever I asked. It's only right that I return the favor. Or at least attempt to. You are too kind. Alas, what I ask of you is rather more trying than delivering the odd lecture. I spoke with Harpocrates to see if he had any inkling as to where another copy might be found, but... But perhaps it is best that you hear the details from him. There we go. Say so. Forgive me, Clive. 
for asking this of you. But this book, it set me on the path to becoming who I am today. Its importance cannot be overstated. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. It keeps feeling like the last time we'll talk to these people. Makes me sad. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. Then you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. You've been talking to Vivian. Well, of course. As always. But she didn't seem keen to tell me very much. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. And yet I gather it did naught to dissuade her. Clive, if the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? Coveters of Secrets. A clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. One such text being the tome Vivian seeks. Chronicling as it does, the true history of the enslavement of bearers. Oh. Which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known. Or, so rumor has it. I've never actually read the thing, or even set eyes on it for that matter. How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized be it books, inventions, or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Which would explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. Snatched. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest or ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. My hunt was doomed from the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I'd pluck it from thin air? Not from thin air, no. From ash. Back to ash. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm. But rather less so across the strait. I have a friend. Well, I had a friend in the village of Garnick, a collector of rare tomes upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark. And no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit. When we next find ourselves there, yes, like we're not specifically going through this... Like, all of these things, last-minute things, tidying up before we run off to, to origin. Oh, Ultima. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. Okay. Um, there we go. Not sure what to expect out of this. So it's a book that has just the history of bearers and how they were enslaved. What a coincidence. I have found myself in Walud. There's a lot of stuff in here. White of flower and black of root, the latter of which gives out an inky gall when cut or crushed. The tribesmen of Northern Storm pricked their skin with oaken needles soaked in such, drawing curious patterns. 
about their arms and legs in honor of their heathen gods. The gall is passing intoxicate that a single drop taken by mouth may result in cramps, most painful for five days and five nights, or if applied to a wound, certain death. Should a slip of the needle end a young warrior's life, it is said that his skin print failed to find favor among the heavens. <laughs> his interest was... The Moogle! No spirit or sprite appears more often in Valisthean folk tales than the humble Moogle. Though they are occasionally painted as mischievous souls akin to pixies or imps, most stories depict them as clumsy yet congenial spirits who delight in helping mankind with their daily labors. They are said to have sweet tooths. Ah, Koopo nuts. Leading to the common superstition that one must not leave cakes or other sweet meats uncovered overnight, lest not remain but crumbs come next come morning. In appearance, they are described as being covered head to toe in soft white fur, excepting the small dark wings that are somehow able to take their flight, and the brightly co colored palms that protrude from the tops of their heads. And yet there is one detail regarding the Mughal that most find more remarkable than e even the orb that tops its brow. The fact that the creatures actually exist. Preposterous, I hear you cry. Everybody knows that Mughals are the stuff of legend. I quite agree, but every legend has its basis in truth. And in the case of the Mughal, the fact may be not so dissimilar to the fiction. Ancient bestiaries list the white mole whose feet do not touch the ground among the beast of the realm. And the illusion beside the name? Why, it is none other than the Mughal. Of course, it is that the creatures, it is true that the creatures are not known to still survive in the twins in the modern day except for nectar perhaps their miniature wings carried them to the other to other climes perhaps they were hunted to extinction or perhaps just perhaps they do still live among us hidden far away from human view oh but wait this is it. ah but if what it says is true <laughs> i need to get this back to the hideaway <laughs> Do I have a way to read it? It's I accidentally exited out of the actual text, but I read all of the Mughal history. <laughs> oh, I don't have a save. Five speed reading. Try the inventory. That's a good point. Wait, these are items. Do we have key items? We do. But not, it, what? No mention is made to the name of the author. Whoop, man. In the wake of the tragic fire at Cairn Norvent in 873V and the subsequent depletion of our most highly practiced intelligencers, all mainland strongholds were instructed to redouble training in clandestine maneuvers, improvised weaponry, and assassination techniques, and dispatch promising volunteers to Stoner for inspection. This report details progress made by the stronghold at Garnick in reinvigorating Walud's ranks of esteemed intelligencers. Nothing here either. There was a war between bearers and regulars. Bearers lost. <laughs> Thank you for the sum summary. Oh, leave Garnick is the quest. I wonder who's gonna stop me. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you we? from a distance, so to speak. Subtle. I know who you are. And we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make. But by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. 
I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Well, let's go. Okay, so bearers were originally more in power. Let's see, shall we? All positions of power and highly exalted. And then there was a so the the normies didn't like it. I wonder, does it say how they were able to to win against the bearers? Sheer number, okay, yeah, that would make sense. confused you too. Yeah, you would think using magic would, um, would help you out a bunch. I can't believe that I just exited out of it. I don't know why. There we go. The bearers put themselves in that position by basically cultivating religion around themselves. Ooh, okay. So they weren't the best leaders to start with. Impressive, but we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly, anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. Yes. So you're trying to control the truth. We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. We're at the very end of the game. Are we really going to meet again? Wait. Damn it. We gone. Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. They never meet again. It's just often uh, when a character says that, we do actually meet again. <laughs> to Vivian. Wait. 
Oh no! I have to exit! I have to exit the game! I went to the wrong spot, didn't I? Hold on. Will they give me a, uh, an option? Will they say, do you really want to continue? Is there a thing that comes up that's like, this is the point of no return? Do you really want to continue or is there not? They don't? Oh no! Now I really do have to close the game. Um... That was like two minutes ago. I think. Oh, geez. Okay, we're good. We are good. I'm actually kind of surprised that didn't happen before. I'm so used to following the uh, the red the red uh, marker, you know. Vivian, I found it, the book you lost. Ah, here you go. You, you found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met well. one of these executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something, that the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable, that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves, you said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. You still feel that way. But you're not... one of us. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather... closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. Yeah, that is true. One down, three to go. Oh yeah, we're not gonna get max level. But, we'll be fine, I'm sure. Oh, a new quest. This must be Tomes. Three, three quests left. There's something about it. Have to do a bit of grinding. Yeah, that's okay. I don't really... I think I need to do it. Um, I know I still have some hunts that I could go do off stream, just, you know, just for fun. I assume also to get a trophy for them. I'll do those off stream though. I thought it said making almonds. <laughs> 
Master Clive, I was just at your desk. Why didn't you just talk to me then? I'm aware there are matters of much greater import which demand your attention, but should you find yourself a moment, I bid you visit me in the shelves, that I might ask you a single favor concerning his highness, Prince Dion. <gasps> Dion? It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. Let's go, Dion, prioritize. Also, did he just say, yeah, he sent him a letter saying, come to my desk. <laughs> Even though I was just over there. Very funny. Lordsman Harpocrates, I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion, but I can't imagine what for. Then Dion is still involved in a that I was once in an endgame spoken. side quest. I'm happy. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in well, everything an emperor should: history, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the Dragoons. His studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... I have yet to find the right moment. Aww. always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer, it is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Let's go talk then to I Dion. That you bring me a wild wyvern tale. What? Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Sure. <laughs> I this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. Mm. There is a waterfall in Rickmau's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. Yeah, this could have been a letter. One way or another. <laughs> Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. Dear Clive, go fetch me a flower. <laughs> Search for... Okay, where is that? Aha. And once more to Walud. Yep. I guess it's not just chatting with people in the hideaway. Way over there. I guess it's not as far as it seems. <laughs> oh, hi, Joshua. <laughs> he keeps scaring me. <laughs> Next to a waterfall. I heard water. Aha. Uh -huh. Still don't see the water. Oh, there. Oh, that's very pretty. 
Straight home now. Well, pick it up first. He's like, okay, we found it. Let's leave. Okay, we are going to skip over. This is the right place. Yes. <laughs> I stared at it for an extra beat just to be sure. Bordman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. Here you go. Must have just been like the exact right positioning. You did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Yes, I miss him. I don't. Oh, he's so nervous. It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Dion's been through a whole bunch. I'm sure he'll be understanding. Dion! Your Highness. Would you do me the honor of accompanying me? No. It is time, then. Well, not quite. No. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. And that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. Yeah. Very See, well. it's all gonna be fine. Take me to him. Yes. Me. Oh, Clive is so good at the words of encouragement. He always knows just what to say. hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Yeah. Gosh, I love Dion. To Harpocrates, pray accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Here we go. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? Color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. 
Something in the harsh environment in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Uh. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates, I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. Then you better survive. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Do not define us. <laughs> no wonder my stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I have thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Dion. Ugh, one of my faves. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wyvern tales. I shall plant their seeds that I might not disappoint his highness. Upon his return. I hope the soil in the hideaway is to their liking. Why? These flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. <sighs> when it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. This. A Stolas quill. Or more precisely, my Stolas quill. Aww. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Ooh. Oh, that was nice. Tale to tell. Two. Two? Two quests remain. And then the whole end of the game. <laughs> In a mood. In case you haven't noticed, your poor hound spends all his time of late on the rear deck whimpering like Gav in his cups. Something ain't right and my gut tells me it's not to do with his supply of antelope bones. What is it this time, Torgal? Don't talk to Torgal that way. Hold on, you just find out that your dog is sick and crying, and you say, what is it this time? I don't think so, Clive. I liked you the entire game until now. Oh, my boy. Oh. Cool. Maybe 
Can I actually pet him right now? I'm still mad at him, by the way. Not Torgal, but Clive. Pining for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Said, that's why. On the day I brought him home. That long ago. And you're only thinking to ask this now? Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg since no. you asked. Clap back their iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? Oh. Heartache, like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Oh. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, You want my iron gone? You find what it is you're looking for. For 13 years. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Togo. Sorry for making you wait so long. <coughs> Let's get that thing off you. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. Oh. You miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? Oh. You want me to go with you somewhere? Oh. Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing. I love all. Karen. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. Go on now. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. <sighs> Torgal. Where to then, Torgal? Torgal, where are you taking me, boy? Where are you taking me? Follow Torgal. What a good quest. I love you. All right, Torgal. Where are you taking me? <laughs> I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. Do you have a better hint for me? Unless... You've already given me one. Back on the rear deck. Oh. West, toward Rosaria. He wants to go back. Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in... Almost 20 years. <coughs> to Port is older then. Ah. Of course, the old mooring is still there. <gasps> All right, let's see. Tor. And that he had it from Sid. Oh, we got a pet Torgal. It's perfect. We finally get to also Joshua's here. Hi, Joshua. <laughs> Fetch. I think I owe a couple. And it's it's his quest. It's his time to shine. I feel good boy. Good boy. Good 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 boy. So many Joshua jump scares. I know it. Oh, he's such a good boy. Oh. oh, wow. All right, Torgal. Are, are they going on a boat? Board Is Torgal going to like this? It's still here. After all these years. Lots more than I remember. 
You're a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. No. You're not gonna kick him out of the boat. I wasn't being serious. Very funny, Clive. You two go on without me. I doubt that boat will hold a third. If you're sure, we won't be long. Hop in, boy. I'm surprised they're leaving Joshua behind. But let's go. Let's go. I feel like Jill could also be here for this, but that's okay. Right through those trees. Come on. Race you there. You and Torgal time. Yeah. What is this? Here we are. This was our hideaway. Wasn't it, Torgal? How did Torgal get up that ladder? <gasps> oh! Coming here helped me to forget who I was. Or wasn't. Prince. Shield. Son his mother could love. Had I been any one oh. of those things? Torgal. Perhaps. What is it, boy? This is all from a castle. And Phoenix came. You bring these here. Oh. oh his barring sword. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> you never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? <laughs> for never giving up. For never forgetting. <laughs> Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. Oh, Torgal. That's not the way back to the boat, Torgal. There's more? All right, all right. I'm coming. Oh, he must have felt so alone for those 13 years. Oh, you sweet. No. <laughs> Sweet boy. <laughs> Come here. Come here. <laughs> no, I don't want a limbo anymore. I want a pet Torgal. <laughs> Fine. Oh, yes. There we go. Hug your dogs. After <sighs> Well, no, not totally alone, but he didn't have... He didn't have Clive. 
thank goodness we could pet him. Such a sweet, sweet boy. talk about the importance of putting the past behind you but without him we wouldn't be who we are today and we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow come on Togo. let's go home <laughs> Torgo is so perfect Jeez. Oh. It's like so sad and wholesome and beautiful and just so full of love. Sorry for the wait. We're ready. Man. I love that side quest. I loved that. I guess it, that leaves only one. Just Jill remains. Jill's side quest. Fun. This one's not gonna be sad, right? This one's just gonna be, like, us holding each other all night long. Wait, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It occurs to me that a single word of thanks does not nearly suffice to express my gratitude for reuniting me with from a distance. The tome made me who I am today, and yet I thought that I should never set eyes upon it again. That those who took it from me had forever robbed me of a part of myself. But now, I am whole again, thanks to you. I regret that I can only fill in the gaps in your knowledge, and not the holes in your soul. For which reason, I shall um, ever be in your debt. Ifrit, you have my sincerest gratitude for reuniting me with the master Harpocrates. That I might embark upon this most important of journeys, my heart free of regret. Though in these past few moons, I have come to realize that the longer I spend in the company of you and your brother, the deeper I find myself in your debt. We must swiftly see to the menace that is Ultima, if not to save the world, to save me from an eternity of recompense. Thank you, Clive, for ever indulging the whims of this doddering old soul. I am ashamed that for too many years I allowed stubbornness and fear to keep me from something t so simple as letting a friend a friend know how proud I was of him. Your in intervention has lifted a heavy pall from my heart. Perhaps upon your triumphant return from the skies, you might be inclined to set to page that quill I gifted you. There are many of us who would hear a first-hand account of your time with the Holy Prince, Myself included. Please be from Torgal. I would love if somehow they like just like had a stamp of a paw print from Torgal in a letter. A fine hound. The two of you have been together for what probably feels like a lifetime now, but there is still a lot. I mean, it is a lifetime. Torgal is like 18 years old, 19 years old. There's still a lot you have to learn about that hound of yours. I. He'd step in front of a bloody raging behemoth if it meant protecting you. Oh. That better not be how this ends. But that don't mean you should take it for granted. At the end of the day, he's a hound. And sometimes he just wants someone to pat his head and rub his belly and give him a handful of Koopo nuts. You're too good to remember that. Joshua? Huh. I thought this was gonna be Jill. Why are you here? <laughs> it's another... It's another Joshua jump scare. Also, I'm feeling way too many emotions all at once. 
<laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> Why would she refer to herself in the third person? I thought it was the name of the quest. I didn't think people were titling their letters. Though her icon brought her much suffering, the loss of Shiva weighs heavy on her heart. And we would poor friends we'd be poor friends indeed if we not seek to lighten that burden. Even but only a fraction before we depart for the skies. I would speak on this more in private. It is a high chill. <laughs> if Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Okay. My gosh, like the Toggle quest isn't wasn't even that sad, but it still made me so sad thinking of all those years that he was collecting Clive's stuff. <laughs> Joshua, I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but since we returned from Drake's spine, I felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. And to let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever. That you still need her. But well, obviously I still need her. We Come on. Close. We were but children. We're in love. Do you remember the time we accompanied father on his annual tour of the duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill. Yeah, to see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the snow first daisies. time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. In the rain. A thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say... He was none too pleased. And then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? <laughs> I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? Aww. Let's go. Let's go, Joshua. Oh man, that Torgal quest! I, I had been, like, uh, clued in that there was a Torgal quest that would probably make me cry. That is not what I expected, though. This way. Nope, this way. That Torgal quest is something else. Like... Ooh! Trophy. This is the place, but I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but it's the only place I know of. You of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Someone at the backyard? To the hideaway, then. Oh, oh yeah, they, they really did a great job with Torgal in this game. I again stared at it for an extra moment just to make sure it wasn't accidentally the MSQ. 
Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find Snowden. I need your advice. That she's okay. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies grow. Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, uh. perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Uh. Thank you. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrak. Ah, the fields beyond Northreach. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept a record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. We haven't talked she to her in a while. Off we go then. Okay. Please have them this time. Oh. A lot of things hit hard in a game that, like, an emotional video game. The Torgal thing, like, hit in a totally separate way than things often do. Aha! See them though. Look. It would have been funny if my tornado got rid of all the flowers. Oh! But well, we're not done yet. Let's hope this is the last one. Only one way to find out. Thank you, Joshua. I did forget you were there. Listen, I just want some flowers. about to get out of the boundary. I think that's the line. This time I'm noticing. I'm over here. No, 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 don't. Mm, don't be dead. Can you all just move this way? Thank you. I'm just gonna stand right here. I didn't realize there were little ones. than I expected. The 
have found a lot of flowers. Her, it was worth it. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Wasn't this kind Come of on. Joshua's idea? Let's go. Okay, are we just going straight to Jill? It appears my work is done. The rest Oh good. Okay. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? Okay, now Jill. Where do you hang out? Oh, you're in my chamber. I guess I knew that. I talked to her last stream. Time to take wife on a date. It's date night. Honey, I'm home. Jill. There's something I'd like to show you. There is? And where might this something be? It's, uh, not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but... How would you but let's get married. Oh, so pretty. There are so many. This is what you wanted to show me. I, uh, I love them together. I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. And look at her! I'm worried about you. Joshua and I. There we go. I remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or... <laughs> Try to. How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. Aww. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. But I felt wonderful nonetheless. I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard you. Oh. Dexter's coming to check. We were talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noble women at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped, so lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there, your hand and mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Torgal came too! Aww. Before we broke camp, the morning after the storm, do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tor. And from there I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized that 
No matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That you, that oh. you would always come for me. And you have, again and again. Where do you see us, when all this is over? I don't know. Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Then... That's what you'll have. Ah! Uh. Yes. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do. Oh! Oh, it's beautiful! I love them. I never was much good at garlands, but it'll have to do. Wait. I'll treasure it forever. It's for him. Thank you. You need to wear it. For this, the flowers, uh, everything. It's exactly what I needed. For you. Oh, my treasure. Oh. Oh, gosh, that's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. I love that. We should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. <laughs> and we'll do it together. Oh, like the end of the game. Oh, that is all of them. That is all of the side quests. Zero. Ooh, we made it. Joining hands with Jill. Until departing. Wait, I could have had her for so much longer. Oh, we're here. We are here. Well, I better go first. Back to the hideaway. I'll restock some potions. The greatest gift. It feels like a lifetime ago. It was a lifetime ago. That afternoon on Man's Hill was our very first adventure. But somehow I knew even then that it would not be our last. I will never forget that day. And the simple fact that you have not either, that you have not either, fills my heart with a joy so fierce I cannot describe it. Since the moment we first met, you have always been an important part of me. The half that makes me whole. When times are darkest, you are my light. When I am lost, you are my guiding star. You are just what I need. You are all that I need. Ah, you are the greatest gift. Beautiful. Mm, that's perfect. Oh, she's out here, right? What's on your mind, Clyde? Ask about memories. Mm. Still can't believe you remembered that day on Man's Hill. For so long. For, for so long, our lives have been defined by loss, but our memories, those no one can take. And if they truly are the only things we can hold on to, then I want more. So when this is over, 
Let's travel the world and make new ones. And I will hoard them as a dragon does her gold, for my memories with you are the most precious of all. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Crying in happiness. Yeah. I want to check my potions. I'll just restock. And then we fly. Still alive, are you? If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. Be She's rushing me. Be quick about it. You're rubbing me blind. You Should know. I finally buy my first elixir? Or my last elixir? No, I'm not gonna buy one. Oh, don't. Oh. I guess we just go. Ifrit. Your resolve didn't falter. No. Though I continue to be bewildered by fate, that I should meet with my old tutor here. The very end of the world. I thank you. With all my heart. For giving me this chance. And I thank you for taking it. I should like to look upon that flower once more. When I am worthy. Aww. I stand ready to leave for origin at your word. May Grieger go with us, and see us safely home. I think it's time. I think it is time.